Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply temporal and spatial gap filling of PY sub -R outputs uh, using the gap filling script provided with PY sub -R. If you check the PY sub -R source, you can see that there is a folder called gap filling here. Inside that folder, you will find two files. One is a Python file, PY, which uh, is the gap filling script and a bat file which is uh, used to enable some environment in the shell. I will show you how to implement these scripts to gap fill your vapor transpiration outputs. You can repeat the same steps for other outputs, for example, biomass. So once you run with the PY subal, you will have output folder for each Landsat image like this and in the documentation it is explained what each of these diff files represent. So in this outputs inside the output underscore evapotranspiration folder this file which is et actual underscore 24 this is the actual evapotranspiration uh, daily actual evapotranspiration for that particular Landsat date. So the first step is to collect all the evapotranspiration maps, actual evapotranspiration maps 24 from all the Landsat image in case of group study, group assignment, group work, you have to collect it from, uh, you may have to collect it from others as well. So collect all the ET actual maps and copy it into one folder. So any variable biomass or transpiration or evaporation you want to gap fill you have to collect those maps from all the landsat images representing all the dates in a crop year or in a year or in multiple years and put it in one folder without any other files so in this example these are the actual et maps which I have computed from PY Sabal running on different Landsat images. So I copied all these maps, all these actual evapotranspiration maps for 24 hours into a new folder called PY Sabal underscore gap fill. And the name of this folder is not important. It's up to you where you want to store this folder. It's just that as usual, you should know where it is. But you need to separate, you need to make two folders. One is for input. So I called it ET underscore input, where I stored all the ET actual outputs from uh, PY Sabal. And I created an output folder, which is empty. So make sure that this output folder is empty. Uh, and this is where all the gap filled outputs will be stored after running the script. So this is the folder structure. And if you want to create uh, or gap fill for biomass, I will create a biomass underscore input folder where all the biomass outputs will be stored and an empty biomass underscore output folder where um, all the gap filled outputs will be stored. As I said, these names, two separate folders are needed, but the name of the folders is up to you. Uh, it should be sensible and you should know where they are. Okay, so this is the input uh, data structure, which uh, is required. Now let's go to the script. Um, now let's see which are the main steps you need. The first step is uh, open OSGO4W shell. So let's open OSGO4W shell. And the next step is navigate to folder gap filling inside PY sub -all dev. So for me, it is in D drive. So I will go to D drive, CD, PY sub -all, sub -all, sorry, not sub -all, uh, gap filling. So this is where uh, my gap fill uh, uh, files are. This is same as what you see here. So two files, here also two files. 
Now, before we proceed, what we need to do is we have to open this Python file, gapfield underscore v3 Python file. So that is a step three here, make user changes in gapfield underscore v3. We will open it in notepad plus plus. And if you come down uh, around line number 42, you can see that user inputs. So from this line to there is another comment which says user inputs finish here. So these are the lines where you have to provide some inputs uh, before you run the script. In Python, any line which starts with hash is a comment. So uh, that is not a code, but that is a comment. So the first four inputs we need is minimum x, minimum y, maximum x, and maximum y. That means bounding box. So to get these values, I would suggest you to open one of the ET map in QGIS and get these values from here. And you can use the same values for other uh, variables like biomass or evaporation or transpiration or NDVI because the extent is same for all the maps. So here I have opened one ET actual map, which is from 24th May 2019. Uh, this is the map. You can get the extents either from right click properties uh, information here you can see this is the extent extent is always minimum x comma minimum y maximum x comma maximum y or you can use one of the plugin which i have mentioned uh, which is called coordinate capture i hope that you all have uh, installed it if not you can install it now so this is coordinate capture uh, it's already installed in my case and this is the icon for that you can use that one so start capture so minimum x and minimum y comes in uh, bottom left so i will put put a point here and you have to so it will show the x and y in uh, utm this coordinate system and also it will show the corresponding x and y in uh, latitude only but we need the x and y in the coordinate system of this map itself and the coordinate system of this map is utm3268 which is the landsat the coordinate system of the landsat itself the output also has the same coordinates itself so i'll copy this one uh, go back to the python and i will fill this one so i'll put it like this i'll add a minimum x here and I will add minimum y here. Now let's find the maximum x and maximum y. I will go to the upper right, which is the maximum x and maximum y. Select a point. I'll copy this x and y, paste it here, and select x separately. Paste it here. Select x separately and paste it here so that is the first four lines the next line is it is asking spatial resolution of the input maps uh, you may not have to change it it is always uh, it is 30 as long as working on landsat now it is asking for in that and out that this is the input directory and output directory so there's an explanation it says input directory where all the py sub -well outputs are stored for example all eta maps in one folder this folder should not have any other files so that is what I prepared in the beginning. So I will go back to uh, that folder again. Device about gap fill ETA input. So this is my folder here. I have only those ETA actual map, nothing else. So you have to make sure that there is nothing else. So I copy, wait, copy and paste the path here. And in Python, please make sure that you have double hashes. Uh, that is a Python syntax. Give uh, double slashes to the path in the path. Now it's asking for uh, out that empty output folder where the gap filled files will be stored. So we have already prepared that, which is the ETA output. I'll copy that one, that path, and paste it here. As I said, please put a double hash, sorry, slashes. It, uh, it's slashes, not hash. 
Now it's asking for CRS, which is a coordinate reference system of the input maps. Output maps will be in the same CRS. So as I said, you can find the CRS uh, in properties, information. Uh, this is the CRS, EPSG32638. So you can copy that one and paste it here. Now it's asking for a GIS database. Okay, so a temporary folder to process the file. So you can give any folder here. I just created a folder called grass temp. It can be an empty folder. So you can also create, it should be there. So in module, in, uh, in D drive, I have a folder called grass temp, this one. It can be empty, it doesn't matter if it is empty. And now it is asking for the start year and month uh, and end year and month, only year and month. Okay, so my start year is, uh, let's go to the input file here. So my start year and month is 2018 October. So I will write 2018 October here, one zero and end is 2019 September. So I'll write 09. Always uh, make sure that you put it as 09. If it is nine, single digit, add a zero. It should be two digits always, the months. Um, and always uh, remember when, wherever there are codes, don't remove those codes. Always put your uh, uh, input inside the codes. Don't change. Now it is asking for the variable name, var, the variable to post process. ETA for actual evapotranspiration, bio for biomass, ST for surface temperature, NDVI for NDVI. Uh, you can also add, for if you want to do it for transpiration, you can also say TA there, uh, doesn't matter. So uh, it's always better to put what I have written here. But for transpiration and evaporation, you can also write TA or TA. Not a problem. It should work. So that's it. So these are the user inputs you have to add. Now your uh, script is ready uh, to run. You can uh, save it. You can close it. We will uh, go back to the shell and let's see what's the next step which I said. So the next step after making user changes, the next step is to enable Python 3 environment and enter. So I can enable it for example this one. I will type the y3 underscore ng. And there is one additional step, uh, enable additional environment uh, variables, which is the file which I have provided in this folder, gap fill underscore env dot bat. So just uh, type gap fill underscore env dot bat and enter that will enable the additional uh, environment variables. Before we proceed further, we need to install one additional package or library, Python library, to make this script work in your computer. And that library is called grass underscore session. It's also given as step five in the PowerPoint here. And to install that, you have to use this command pip install grass underscore session and enter you should be connected to internet and it will install that particular uh, library now it's time to run uh, the python script using this command uh, so you can type python space gap fill underscore v3.py enter and now it will start uh, running uh, looking into input files and start running everything just make sure that you are connected to internet for the first part of the uh, script you need internet so, so now it is it started to it find all the files and it started processing all the files so now you can see that uh, the processing is over uh, it finished uh, processing all the images and uh, here you can see towards the end of the script you will see uh, some warnings 
starting with error space 6 this error you can ignore because it's related to color table while exporting the diff files uh, which is not relevant to uh, at the actual process so you can ignore this message so let's check uh, uh, what is there in the output folder um, the entire process for me uh, for the entire year it took uh, 45 minutes to process this many uh, data this is the input files and let's see the output so in the output now you can see that there are 12 images uh, TIFF files uh, representing each month so these are all um, averaged multiplied by number of days temporarily interpolated spatially interpolated and filtered maps for each month that's it for uh, temporal and spatial interpolation of uh, evapotranspiration. Now you can repeat the same step for other variables uh, which you get as an output of PY sub R like biomass or evaporation or transpiration for example. Uh, you can follow the same steps and uh, uh, do the gap filling. Thank you.